Hello, my name is George Cairns, and in this video lesson, we're going to have a look at how to use Digital Photo Professional 4's monochrome picture style to create better black and white conversions. If you just throw out the colour information in the shot, you can end up with a bland wash of grayscale tones where everything kind of blends together with everything else in a mass of midtones. But by using the monochrome picture style, you could make things pop out more effectively and create a higher contrast with particular areas just to draw attention to shapes and textures in the black and white version of the scene. So kick off by downloading our start files, Mono01, Mono02, and then pop them into your PC and browse to them in the folder window here. Now I've got two different types of colour ranges here. We've got some blues and some oranges and I'm going to show you how to use the colour in the original photograph to change the look of the tones in the black and white conversion because that's a powerful way of making particular areas lighter or darker so they contrast more effectively with other parts of the scene. Let's kick off with Mono 01 start, click to select that and then pop up to view and choose edit image window. So it's very easy to convert a shot into black and white. You just go down to picture style here and you can set that from the default, which was portrait. You can see the wee camera icon is showing me which one I used on location. So I'm going to go down to monochrome and that throws out all the color information and gives me an instant black and white print. But if we have a look at the histogram here, you can see there's a fair spread of shadows, midtones, and highlights, but there aren't any true blacks in the image. So a good black and white shot should have some black blacks, some white whites, just to create a nice strong contrast. So we can make that contrast adjustment by popping down to this setting here. You might need to toggle it open if it says gamma adjustment, toggle that open and you get a histogram which allows you to remap tones using these sliders here. This is going to remap the shadows to darker values. If I drag that to the right, then the shadows are going to be getting darker. If I go too far, for example, you can see we've got really over the top clipped shadows and clipping is quite useful to enable you to tell which areas are actually pure black. So I'm going to pop down to the clipping warning, click to select that, and you can see that if I click here, I've got a range of anything below five, the darkest is zero, so anything below five is going to show as a clipped warning, like so, and anything above 250 is going to show as a clipped highlight in red. So you can set these to the same as I've got them here, just to see the very darkest and the very brightest pixels in your picture. So now if I take this slider to the left, to the bottom of the histogram, you can see we've got less clipping happening, we go all the way to the far left here, you've got no clipping at all. So we just want a little bit of clipping so we know we've got some dark shadows in the shot, like so. So I've remapped the shadow input level to a darker output level. And we can see we've clipped those shadows to create a nice contrast. We could also try and brighten up any underexposed highlights, but these highlights are pretty bright. But I'll just show you how that works anyway. Here's the highlight slider down here. Drag that to the left and that's remapping the brightest highlights to an even brighter value so it's taking them all up to a value of 255, and that's clipping the sky there. But we're losing detail there, so what I'm going to do is just have a bare hint of bright highlight at the top right there. And what we could do, in fact, is go to highlight here, and if we drag that to the left, that just brings back some of the missing detail in the sky. And that's more important to actually see some of this cloud texture rather than having pure white pixels. But we still have a healthy contrast. If I go up to the histogram, you can see we've now got more dark shadows at the far left, lots of midtones and the highlights are spreading almost to the far right there. I've just clawed them back a little bit just to try and reveal a little bit more detail in the brighter sky. But we do know that we can brighten the sky even more using this slider down here, if need be. I'm going to turn the clipping warning off now. And we've now got a shot that's got much more contrast and that helps draw attention to different parts of the image and help them stand out more effectively. But we can do even more thanks to the advanced tools, the filter effect and toning effect. So let's experiment with the filter effects drop down menu. If we click on none, you're getting the tones as you see them there. But if we put a yellow filter over our virtual camera, that's lightening up warm tones such as the oranges of the roof. In fact, if we keep going to orange there, that's going to lighten those tones even more. So they're now becoming similar to the tones on this part of the building. And we can lighten them up even more with a red. And now there's less contrast in the shot. So I'm going to use this option here, which is green, because green enables you to darken the oranges and make the roofs contrast more effectively with the lighter parts of the photograph. So thanks to the filter effect, you can lighten or darken particular colors and help create more contrast in a monochrome conversion. Let's just try another image. Now let's go back to 
this shot here, which has got lots of blues. And let's pop back up to view and go to edit image window. Now, traditionally, photographers who are shooting with black and white film could put a coloured filter over the lens to lighten or darken particular colours in the scene. And we can actually mimic that effect in Digital Photo Professional 4 using picture styles and filter effects. Let me show you what I mean by taking this picture style here. The shot was taken on landscape picture style, as you can see with a little camera. Let's go to monochrome to throw out the colour information. And now we can create more contrast by adjusting the filter effects. So if we pop down here to filter effect and change that to red, that will traditionally darken any blues in the shot, and indeed it does here as well. And that helps the building contrast even more effectively with the sky. And it's a great way of making delicate clouds stand out more effectively as well when you apply a red filter effect. So we can now see a seagull flying there more clearly too. So that's just a good tip when working with skies to use the red filter effect. And finally, you can add a little bit of mood to a photograph once you've converted it to black and white by bringing back a wash of colour to the tones. So if we go to toning effect, we can create a nice romantic sepia effect, which is good for, say, wedding photographs, for example, or historical scenes like this. Or you could create a more moody blue by choosing the blue toner like so. I'm going to stick with sepia, though, because it suits this subject matter more effectively. So that's how Digital Photo Professional 4 enables you to make some more high contrast and creative monochrome conversions.